Hi, this is Chris German, The Apartment Dealer. Welcome back to The Apartment Dealer Show. Do we have a treat for you today? Today I'll be bringing together the uh, panel of speakers that normally speak at our live educational events that we host for landlords uh, to do a webinar of sorts to address questions that uh, either our personal clients have submitted or that were a carryover from our last live event that we just didn't get time to answer. Will apartment building prices go down if we go into a recession? Uh, we would like to hear from everyone here, but uh, we'll start with Gil. In, in a mathematical equation, it must, right? Um, the question will be, as cap rates get compressed, what will be the motivation to a buyer to pay for a building that doesn't debt service or how much down he'd have to do? So mathematically, I would say absolutely. Um, based on what we're seeing of insolvency in banks or maybe some other um, asset-based uh, Bitcoin and everything else that's falling now, people might want to pay for a tangible irregardless of cash flow. And that is something I can't put a metric to. I don't think anyone can. So the question will be, at what point does it not be a, a cash flow instrument versus just a, 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 a saving bond or some type of just a asset where it is tangible? Those are the unknowns. I, I'm just going to uh, agree with Gil as far as the single family home business. Uh, you'll probably have a mathematical equation where the price will go down some. Uh, there'll be some other countermeasures where you have lots of interest rates that are fixed for 30 years at two or three that people will just say, well, I'm never selling. I'm just going to stay. And that inventory doesn't show up. But uh, it would seem like that this will have to have an impact mathematically on the price. But what it also does at the same time, it takes out of the euphoria. It takes away the euphoria if I, I have to have one to going back to, well, I'll, I'll wait for the next round or something. There's no, uh, there's no bad time to buy real estate. There are only bad ways to buy real estate. And anyone who is smart, who's buying real estate and sees that interest rates are higher will be willing to pay less for real estate because it affects the bottom line. It affects the, uh, the, the, the spendable money that comes out of a cash flow project. It affects the speculative sales price for a fix and flip. It affects everything. So if you have higher interest rates, you necessarily as, uh, uh, you're, you're necessarily going to have a lower price. Now, because of inflation at the same time, the price not, might not be lower in terms of dollars. But instead of going up with inflation, it might stay the same, which is essentially going down. I was going to say, Steve, a good point um, on with inflation. I believe that uh, it's going to be fragmented across the country and fragmented in different municipalities. The, the municipalities that are that are that are uh, creating a lot of strings attached to protect the tenant could potentially go down. But in the municipalities that allow free markets to take care of itself. Whereas there's inflation, you're allowed to raise your, uh, your tenant rates, et cetera, you may not see a price decrease. Because I think what happens is uh, typically when you have a recessionary environment, governments like to get involved in the free market formula and uh, attach some strengths to protect the, the tenant base, or like we saw experience during COVID. And I think that could harm prices uh, if we continue those kind of uh, policies. Because then we're going to ask the question is, they continue to do it, when are they going to stop? Because then it's a, it's a perpetual motion to never, never land, to really get, a, get back to a free market driven uh, rental economy uh, for purposes of multifamily. Whereas if you're in other states like Florida, where you don't have that, prices, I think, will continue to rise as rents rise due to inflation. And I think it's important for investors to understand in 2019, the market was already shifting. I remember at the live event, uh, the educational event we had, me and Bruce uh, talking backstage and Bruce basically saying, these are great charts, yet the real estate market is not off to the races. So that's definitely a signal of a problem. If you looked at charts when it comes to apartments, 17, 18, 19, in painting and broad strokes, we basically were bumping along sideways. And then we had COVID. And with COVID, COVID brought with it the lift that the market needed, a big injection of cash. It's increased uh, rental rates. 
Um, but I think what you're going to see is the correction that we were just about to have in 2020 finally take place. Still bullish on California for apartments, or should we sell and invest in business-friendly states? Uh, again, we'd like to have everyone chime in, but Chris, if you could start this off. Uh, well, I mean, right up front, I recently just bought uh, two apartment buildings If that here locally here in California. Uh, if that tells you anything about my stance on should you still be purchasing. And I think a lot of that uh, or, or a big portion of that answer comes down to where are you um, in that life of an investor? If you're an individual who you know that you're going to sell within the next two to three years, say for whatever reason, if I had to bet you get more money out today from the building than you do two or three years from now. That would be my guess. If you're looking simply to exit real estate altogether, you're ready to pay the taxes or maybe carry back financing, something like that. If you're in a growth pattern, like my wife and I, we're buying buildings now to be our future retirement. They might supplement our income a little bit today, but it's really about the future. You got to ask yourself, are you prepared to manage properties out of state? If you know how hard it is even here locally to find good tradesmen, plumbers, electricians, contractors, and for them to do honest work at an honest wage, can you imagine trying to do that halfway around uh, across the country? Not to say that it can't be done and there's not investors doing it every day and probably making money hand over fist, but my wife and I are more proactive. It seems like the clients we deal with, you know, they like to visit the property once a week. I don't know if you're that type of individual who's that hands-on with a property, it's very wise for you uh, to go and buy something that you can't necessarily drive there. You got to, you know, take a flight. Uh, I'll stop buying uh, real estate in California when people stop living in California. And someone might respond, oh, but so many people are moving away. Yeah, well, there are plenty of people here. Uh, take a look at the freeway any day of the week. There are plenty of people who live here the key is that the employment bone is connected to the apartment bone. As long as you have a broad-based economy with jobs, apartments will thrive. California fits that definition for sure. I'll take California over a lot of other places. Uh, we own properties in uh, Arizona, Colorado, uh, Washington, and California. I'll take California and those states because they have broad-based economic structure, substructure, as opposed to someplace where you can buy something really cheap, where if one employer lays off 8,000 people at once, all of a sudden the apartment that you thought was great is vacant and boarded up with plywood. California looks great to me on, in every respect. Yes, there are problems with the government that's in our way. Yes, there are problems with laws that are in our way. I'll take those problems over a lack of employment that could occur in many other places. Idealistic mathematics, uh, maybe I'm coining a new frame, but on paper, everything else looks beautiful. But um, you have to assume that in inflation, you're going to have higher capital cost in, in fixing buildings and getting uh, labor. That in a low income area with you know higher cap rates sometimes just doesn't make sense. So buildings are penciling at 60 and 70 percent expenses. So you have to be very careful assuming that the same marketing uh, analytics that you used in California to be successful will work somewhere else. They don't. You have to be very familiar with those math and metrics in the area as far as demographics and as far as jobs coming in and staying in, as, as Stephen said. So unless you're willing to move, take a lot of risk, be hands-on, and expect um, difficult situations with labor cost and, and rehab cost, I would say don't do it. Uh, well, as you know, I live in Florida and moved all my assets there. So I guess I'm the anomaly, but I've been doing that for a while. So that was not uh, shooting from the hip. And, and part of it is I, I, I like the fact that I feel like the laws are in place that honor ownership over occupancy. So I spent a lot of time early on talking about how difficult it is to have somebody that shouldn't be in a building, get they get to stay there. I that's one of my preferences in Florida is that I, that I, I don't have that problem. And I would point investors that uh, if you're fixated on investing out of state, 
um, I would place a call with uh, Bruce's group who can assist you in, in purchasing, say, in Florida. And I like what Bruce uh, does here because uh, I think it's a two-day event that they go to Florida, they take a look at the projects, and you really vet them. Are they a good candidate, not financially, but personality and, and, and everything else for owning out of state? Um, and I would say that's a good place to start if you, are if you again, are have this interest in, in investing out of state to link up with a group like Bruce that um, walks you through, if you've never been through this before, investing out of state, walks you through all there is to know the location, the demographics, um, what's really happening there on the ground. And then they can also play, set up management for you to address some of the concerns that have been mentioned here. I think no, no, nothing is easier from a distance. <laughs> can I just add something to that, that that nobody has brought up yet, except Bruce somewhat alluded to it. Stephen, everything you said is accurate, but what's getting left out of this is the bureaucratic red tape. Santa Monica, for example, just passed, uh, their rent control board just passed a max cap of $140 on rent increases for th this year. So while all the, the, the metrics you guys are using are accurate, I think what needs to be looked at on a bigger picture is what's the state doing to protect the landlords? And that's what Bruce was talking about. And this particular state, especially in Southern California, is doing absolutely nothing to protect the landlords. And so if you're if you're if you take all the factors that that everybody has brought up, especially Stephen, and you, you weigh those on one side of the scale. Yeah, it, you know, the economies, by the way, one of the largest meat packers. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw this just decided they're leaving California. They were in Vernon. This is the, the Farmer John Meatpacking Company's leaving. So there's employers leaving. You've got a state that's very anti-private property. You've got a state that's implementing legislation that's very pro-tenant, keeping them in the building. You've got local municipalities that are implementing caps that are at 30% of CPI. Um, and so like, like Stephen has said multiple times today, there's never a bad time to buy real estate, but there's a there's a there could be a bad way to do it, or possibly a bad location to do it. Is California a bad location at the moment? I, I think it's really getting there very quickly. Um, can other people make money? Sure, they can on, in the right circumstances. I know clients I've just spoken to two in the last week that are getting really really good deals on some buildings because they're in downtown Los Angeles. So when, they, when we did the analysis and walked through the whole thing, was it a deal for them? Absolutely. But is that the norm? No. I think the, the, the regulatory environment of California is going to make things worse for the foreseeable future for landlords. Does that mean you can't make money on it? I don't think so. It, it just has to be done correctly. Does that mean it'll be easy? Heck no. It's going to be very, very difficult for landlords to navigate these systems and these laws that are in place especially with these, every city I know now is starting to talk about tenant protections and uh, rent, their own rent control ordinance that goes above and beyond the state's rent control. And every one of them are talking about uh, caps that are at a fraction of even the published CPI numbers, which are, we all know are not accurate. They're off by a significant amount. So if you're at 30% at of CPI and published CPI is 8.6%, but real CPI is 12 to 13 percent, and you're at 30 percent of eight or eight and a half. That's very difficult to, uh, to own to purchase that property and flip that around to make some money in a rent control jurisdiction. So I think that's at least one thing that that hasn't necessarily been brought up that to, that needs to be added to that equation. So Mike, you 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 make a great point, and I agree with the, what all the panel panelists are speaking uh, about today about this question. And, and I can't tell you how many clients have left California being naive, thinking it was going to be easy. And then when they try to find the labor pool to fix up the properties or, or, uh, or they run out to a tenant, they're naive thinking that it'll be somewhere to their workforce that they had in California to get the job done. And they underestimated that process. So as a result of, of these, uh, uh, you know, naivety, so to speak, you got to be buyer beware. If you're planning on going out of state, do your homework. Don't just jump into it head first, assuming that the supply chain that you are working with are going to are going to uh, be perfect. It's not going to be a perfect transition. It never yeah. is. It's hard to beat California on that level. That's for sure. 
but it's it's easy to be ca- California on a regulatory level. So th- that's where it has to be balanced out. I guess I'd add this. California on a regulatory level is regulatory hell. And what it is doing is it is compounding and will further compound the housing shortage. And the yep. housing shortage, as it increases, will lead to decreased supply. And that will drive prices up. And that will be the payoff for California landlords who brave the California regulatory morass. True, but I will the counterpoint to that, Stephen, is that as the supply evaporates, that is the, the very basis or the rationale used by the regulators to implement tighter and tighter rent control and, and other tenant protections. Oh, we have a housing crisis. We have a housing shortage. Yes, we do, driven by policies up in Sacramento, but that is why they keep implementing more and more and more. So you're absolutely correct, but it's a, it's a circle. Well, gentlemen, I think we're going to wrap it up there. I know that in the savings of time, people have time constraints here, but uh, I want to thank all of you for participating today. All right, Chris, thank you again. uh, These are fantastic groups to get together and talk about all these different issues. The the fact that you organize and pull this together is a tremendous uh, contribution to the awareness and education of property owners. Uh, Thank you. I know that was a long session, but I believe it was very informative. I think we tackled probably all the major topics that have been on your mind of late as, as I mentioned at the opening, this market is in flux with inflation, rising interest rates, changes on the ground when it comes to the eviction moratoriums and so forth. I hope this helps you in the day-to-day management of your multifamily properties. And I hope that the education that uh, we're pouring out into the market Uh, goes above and beyond just the management of the day-to-day, but also helps you build your financial legacy in multifamily properties. Chris German, The Apartment Dealer, until next time, I wish you positive cash flow, tenants who behave, and much protection from Uncle Sam. Talk to you soon.